Once upon a time, a popular little children's cable network called Nickelodeon put together a new young adult sitcom, a show that would prove incredibly successful for the channel. The show was about a plucky teenage girl navigating school, getting crushes on boys, and hanging out with a bunch of oddball friends and family. It was also about this girl's relationship with the then-modern tech media landscape, stuff that was cutting edge then, but years later feels a bit silly and dated. The show's goofy humor and talented cast of young performers made it a long-running hit, but as the child actors got older, it was decided to put the show away and move on to other projects. But then, a thought. What if we made a new show, a sequel show, that followed the main character into their adult life, a continuation that carried with it the wit of the previous show, but now broached more grown-up topics like jobs and adult relationships and paying rent? Would this work? Would longtime fans be receptive to this new direction? Would it appeal to a new audience? Let's find out. This is the story of Clarissa Now. Um, Hugh, I mean, Mr. Hamilton. Hi, I'm Clarissa. I'm your new assistant. I just wanted to say working with you is a total thrill and a major honor. That story you wrote about that little homeless boy, Benny, we read it in social studies. And that part about how Benny slept with green eggs and ham. And you wrote, Benny gave his book what he couldn't have, a home. I cried. I mean, they had to send me to the nurse's office. You're not going to ask me to put money in a can, are you? <laughs> That's very funny, Mr. Hamilton. But seriously, you know, just tell me what you want me to do. Get lost! Sorry, I couldn't help myself, but the parallels are uncanny. And with the new We're All Adults Now iCarly series premiering on Paramount+, Plus, the only streaming service I can write off on my taxes, it seemed appropriate to touch on the first time a Nickelodeon show got a We're All Adults Now spinoff. Clarissa Explains It All premiered on March 23rd, 1991, aka the most important year in Nickelodeon's history. And of the live-action offerings from that year, Clarissa was easily the most successful, running for five seasons and spearheading the SNCC programming block beginning in 1992, as well as making a star out of Melissa Joan Hart. Of course, we'll explore the show at length when Nick Nax gets to 1991. Clarissa Explains It All's ending was inevitable. Hart turned 18 and was aging out, Nickelodeon didn't make shows about college students, and you know, nothing lasts forever. Five seasons is pretty dang solid, but it wasn't cancelled because of any drop in popularity. The show's fourth season drew in 2.5 million viewers per week. The character of Clarissa Darling still had legs, and so series creator Mitchell Kriegman opted to see if the show's young adult audience would follow her onto another, somewhat more mature show on another network. Produced by Viacom Entertainment and simply titled Clarissa, Production on the pilot was announced on November 9, 1993, a mere 17 days after the premiere of Clarissa Explains It All's fifth and final season. Clarissa's network of choice? CBS. CBS is attracted to her character. I think they see her as someone that is in the line of Marlo Thomas, Mary Tyler Moore, and Murphy Brown that has a kind of reality to her and a fresh and optimistic quality I think they were impressed with. The plan, should the pilot go to series, would be to have the final episode of Explains It All lead directly into the new show, and have Nickelodeon air Clarissa's first few episodes as a way to wean the audience towards the CBS show. And indeed, the final episode of Explains It All sees Clarissa Darling winning an internship. You won! I won? I won! What'd I win? <laughs> Your feature on Malls and Teen Angst at one first place! That's incredible! <laughs> so, do I get like a trophy or something? Or maybe a plaque and a savings bond? Clarissa, I thought you knew! Knew what? Who sponsored the contest? I submitted your feature to the Daily Post! The New York Daily Post? Exactly! And well, they, they've awarded you an internship! That's great, an internship. <laughs> what do you mean, an internship? You get to move to New York City and work on the Post as a, as a cub reporter, a copy assistant for the whole year! New York City? Clarissa, this is an honor! And this gives us the premise of our pilot. 
Written by Terry Minsky, who would go on to create the very Explains It All-esque Disney show, Lizzie McGuire. In Clarissa, Clarissa Darling, Melissa Joan Hart, travels to New York City and starts her internship for a floundering New York tabloid, working under a slubby, crouchy, unbathed, loud-mouthed colonist. I've been writing this column, uh, let's see, five times a week for 22 years. What is that, five, six thousand columns, all by myself. This is the first time anyone's come to me with an idea. Isn't that incredible? In just a short time, you've been working here. How long has it been? Three and a half hours. Basically the running time of an Oliver Stone movie. I should think that's plenty of time for you to think of things I haven't seen or done in 22 years. Well, if you don't want to hear them. Uh, are you kidding? I'm tingling. You know, a, a real pick-me-up of a premise. Gone is the original show's colorful, Keith Haring-inspired pop design, instead opting for a more brown and dirty look to represent New York City. Because when you're a grown-up, no color allowed. Clarissa is the only returning character. It's possible her family and friends from Explains It All would have popped in for guest spots should it have gone to series, but instead of Ferguson and Sam, we got a bunch of middle-aged, implied alcoholics. A hell of a cast, though. You have stand-up comedian and Tony Award-winning theater actor Robert Klein playing columnist Hugh Hamilton. Let me get an actress. <laughs> and you gave yourself five years to make it, most of which was spent waitressing and dives, and time was running out. And then you got cast in a Broadway musical, didn't you? It's only an understudy role, but you're going on tonight for the first time, huh? You on Broadway! Nothing can stop you now! <laughs> I hate stories like that! Good luck tonight! You have future star of The Practice, Lisa Gay Hamilton, as editor Portal Russell, always looking for the most eye-catching headline. What are we leading with? The president's trip to Moscow or Brooklyn baby born with a full set of teeth? Do we have a picture? Okay, here's the headline. I'm not breastfeeding this one. <laughs> and you have theater legend, five-time Tony winner, Marion Sellis, as the newspaper's sweet but practical owner, Lillian Banyan. I wish I could sometimes just come down to the newsroom and chat with people and not intimidate them so much. But you like to intimidate us. True. But every so often, I enjoy a little chat with someone who isn't a total suck-up. Just a murderer's row of a cast. Melissa Joan Hart is also doing her best with the premise, but as a continuation of the Nickelodeon character, this incarnation of Clarissa Darling feels... off. The show maintains the fourth wall breaks, with Clarissa talking directly to the camera, but where you expect her to offer advice on how to survive the hustle and bustle of New York City as a college-aged young person, she instead takes this time to express oddly naive optimism about her crappy situation. To use a modern reference, there's a real Kimmy Schmidt element to how Clarissa is characterized in this pilot. Yeah. Yeah, it's Isn't this great? Everywhere you go in New York, tons and tons and tons of people. Not just any people. The coolest, most fascinating people in the world. Honey, get your hand off of my butt! <laughs> I try very hard to stray away from the nostalgia-goggled argument that is, this is different and different is bad, but as a direct continuation of Clarissa Explains It All, it almost feels critical of the show that came before. So Hamilton, the column guy, hasn't written anything in weeks. He's in a slump. His job is on the line. And in comes his new chippy intern, Clarissa. Clarissa tries her best to inspire him, and she succeeds, but not in the way she had planned. It's easy to tell Clarissa hasn't been here long. Her New York is a big salty pretzel covered in mustard. It's a red ball that falls from the sky every night because every night for Clarissa is New Year's Eve. This is sickening. This is Clarissa's New York, and I have just one piece of advice for her. Move. This God I Hate Clarissa column is a success and saves Hamilton from being fired from the paper. Clarissa doesn't push back, doesn't seem all that betrayed by her employer, she doesn't stand up for herself. 
So according to the narrative, this mean-spirited column is seen as a good thing. The central tension of the pilot, and therefore the source of the comedy, is the clash of Clarissa's young, small-town optimism versus the jaded New York lifestyle. So the pilot repositions Clarissa's character, once a very clever and trendy young woman, as both a little stupid and a huge pushover. Heck, the pilot ends with one of her co-workers taking her computer away from her, and Clarissa just smiling and saying, It's fine. This is fine. I'm just not sure who the audience for this show is. None of the charm and breaking of conventions is carried over from Explains It All, and fans probably wouldn't care for this character they loved being crapped on like this. And for adult viewers who aren't familiar with the franchise, you have a stock standard working girl comedy that is both charmless and toothless, neither fun nor clever. Now, of course, no show peaks with their pilot, and it's very possible Clarissa would have found its footing with time. But both Mitchell Kriegman and Melissa Joan Hart weren't feeling it, and they were both relieved when CBS decided not to go forward with the series. CBS was known as like the old man's network, and they were like, let's bring some youth to it, let's bring Clarissa to CBS. So we shot a pilot, and um, and it just didn't, it didn't really have the feel of Clarissa, so it didn't really take off. The network decided not to make this show, not to go forward with it, and when people found out about it recently, they've been pretty upset that it didn't go forward, but it wouldn't have been the same show. I don't think people would have liked it as much. As far as I can tell, the pilot only ever aired once, rebranded as Clarissa Now, on September 29th, 1996 as a little treat for Nickelodeon's big helpathon, which Melissa Joan Hart co-hosted. Hey, that means it aired on Nickelodeon, so it technically qualifies for Knickknack Sample Platter. Thankfully, someone was wise enough to record the event, and while the video quality is basically mud, at least we can see this odd footnote in the history of Clarissa Explains It All. No need to feel bad for those involved, Melissa Joan Hart would find even greater success in 1996 with Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and Mitchell Kriegman would score another hit in 1997 with Bear in the Big Blue House. Clarissa Explains It All would rerun on Nickelodeon until 2001. Despite the failure of this pilot, there still seemed to be some interest from the creators as to Clarissa's story as an adult. In 2015, Mitchell Kriegman wrote a sequel novel, Things I Can't Explain, that saw Clarissa in her late 20s. In 2018, development of a new Clarissa series for Nickelodeon was announced, which would see the character as a mother. But as of this video, we've received no further updates on this project. Perhaps, if the new iCarly series is considered a glowing success, Nickelodeon might finally hit the gas on the new Clarissa series, and we'll see if it's even possible to make a good, grown-up Clarissa show. The pilot certainly wasn't that. Nobody wanted to see the character in such a miserable state. But hey, you know, you miss all the swings you don't take. As for Clarissa Explains It All as a whole, well, that's for another video. This was just a sample.